Here's a lesson on communicating with algebra. In this lesson, we'll learn important concepts such as how terms are made up of the product of coefficients and variables. We'll also learn how to find the degree of terms and also how to find the degree of polynomials. And lastly, we'll learn how to write algebraic expressions for different scenarios that are described. So let's start with part one, where we look at terms. First off, algebra is the branch of mathematics where we use variables, which are often letters, to represent unknown numbers in equations and expressions. It allows us to generalize mathematical relationships and solve problems in a structured way. A term is an expression formed by the product of both numbers and variables. So for example, this term, 4x squared, is a product of a number, 4, and a variable, x squared. The number part of that term, the 4, we call that the coefficient, and the variable part of the term is x squared. And now let's do example 1, where we look at different terms and practice distinguishing between what's the coefficient and what's the variable part of each term. So in the first scenario, it says Jim earns $7 per hour at his part-time job. If he works for x hours, his earnings in dollars are 7 times x. So our term is 7 times x, which is a product of a number and a variable. The number part of that term, the 7, is our coefficient, and the variable part is x. The second scenario says the depth in meters of a falling stone in a well after t seconds is negative 4.9 t squared. So our term is negative 4.9 t squared. The number part of that term is negative 4.9, and the variable part is t squared. The third scenario says the area of a triangle with base b and height h is a half times b times h. The number part of that term is a half, so that's our coefficient. And the variable part of this term are the unknowns b and h. And then the last scenario says the area of a square with side length k is k squared, so our term is k squared. I don't see a coefficient in front of that k squared. And when you don't see a coefficient in front of a variable, there is a coefficient of 1 there because 1 times k squared is equal to k squared, we don't have to write the 1. But the coefficient is 1, and the variable part is k squared. And now let's move on to how we tell the degree of a term. The degree of the term is the sum of the exponents on the variables in a term. So for example, this term 5x squared y cubed, if we look at the exponents on the variables in that term, the exponents are 2 and 3. 2 plus 3 is 5, which means that term is degree 5. So let's practice, in example 2, finding the degree of each of the terms. The first term, x squared, only has one variable, so the sum of the exponents is just the one exponent. The exponent is 2, which means the degree of the term is 2. The next term, 3y to the 4, only has one variable, and its exponent is 4, which means that term is degree 4. But in the next term, let me zoom in a bit, there are two variables, u and v. When you don't see exponents on a variable, there are exponents of 1 on those variables. So the sum of those exponents on those variables is 1 plus 1, which equals 2, which means the degree of that term is degree 2. And the next term, negative 2a squared b, the exponents on the variables are 2 and 1. 2 plus 1 is 3, which means that term is degree 3. And the last term is just a constant, negative 5. There is no variable part to that term. So there are no exponents on the variables in that term, which means that term is degree 0. Any constant is a degree 0 term. So a couple notes we want to make about what we've learned there is that a variable that appears to have no exponent actually has an exponent of 1, and a constant is a degree 0 term. And now let's move on to polynomial expressions. A polynomial expression is an algebraic expression consisting of one or more terms connected by addition or subtraction operators. Expressions do not include equal signs. So an example of a polynomial expression is 3x squared plus 5x. This expression is made up of two terms and is called a binomial. And I know it's made of two terms because this addition operator separates the two terms from each other. The terms are 3x squared and 5x, and they're separated by that plus sign. And polynomials can be classified based on how many terms it has. If a polynomial just has one term, it's called a monomial. 
If it has two terms, it's a binomial. Three terms is a trinomial. And if it has more than three terms, we don't have a special name for it. We just name it based on how many terms it has. So a polynomial with four terms, we just say is a four term polynomial. So let's look at example three, where we have four different polynomials. We'll state how many terms there are and then state the type of polynomial it is. So our first polynomial is 3x squared plus 2x. To figure out how many terms there are, look for the addition and subtraction signs that separate the terms from each other. I see a plus sign, which is separating the two terms from each other. I have a 3x squared and a 2x being separated by the plus sign. So there are two terms, which means this is a binomial. Negative 2m, there are no terms being added or subtracted to that, so there is only one term, which means it is a monomial. But the third one, 4x squared minus 3xy plus y squared, look for the subtraction and addition operators that separate the terms, and I see that there are one, two, three terms, which means this is a trinomial. And the last term, a minus 2b plus c minus 3. There are one, two, three, four terms, which means it is a four-term polynomial. And now let's look at how we find the degree of a polynomial. The degree of a polynomial is equal to the degree of the highest degree term in the polynomial. For example, this polynomial, 3x squared y to the 4 plus 11x squared y squared plus y to the 5, has three terms. The first term is degree 6, the middle term is degree 4, and the last term is degree 5. So the highest degree term is this 3x squared y to the 4. That term, if I add the exponents on the variables, is degree 6, which means the degree of the entire polynomial is degree 6. Whatever the degree of the highest degree term is, that's the degree of the polynomial. So let's find the degree in example 4 of each of these polynomials. The first polynomial is made up of two terms, an x to the 1, which is degree 1, and a 3, which is a constant, so it's degree 0. So the highest degree term is x to the 1, and the degree of that term is 1, which means the degree of the polynomial is 1. The second polynomial, 5x squared minus 2x, I have two terms separated by this minus sign. The first term, 5x squared, is degree 2, and the second term, 2x, is degree 1. So the 5x squared is our highest degree term. It's degree 2, which means the polynomial is degree 2. The third polynomial has three terms separated by these addition and subtraction operators. 3y cubed is the highest degree term out of those three terms. And it is degree 3, which means the polynomial is degree 3. And then the last polynomial has two terms separated by the addition operator. The first term, if I add the exponents on the variables, is degree 6. And the second term, if I add the exponents on the variables, it's degree 7. So x to the 6y is the highest degree term. It's degree 7, which means the polynomial is degree 7. And now the last thing we want to do is practice communicating with algebra. When converting sentences to algebraic expressions or equations, we always assign a variable to the unknown, and we look for key terminology, such as sum, difference, product, quotient, or is equal to, and then use the appropriate operation or symbol in the expression. So for example 5, let's practice changing these into algebraic expressions. If we want the sum of x and 12, well the sum means we're adding the two of them. So the expression would just be x plus 12. B says 5 less than y. Well if I want 5 less than y, I start with y and then subtract 5. Part C says 10 times the result of 6 less than x. Well 6 less than x I just start with x and then subtract 6, and I want to do 10 times that whole result. So I need to put that result in brackets and multiply it by 10. And then part d says the quotient of 5x and 9. Quotient means I need to divide them, 5x divided by 9. Now let's go on to example 6. It says write down an expression to represent the number of cookies there are if we have three full boxes and three extra cookies. Well, I don't know how many cookies are in each box, so I can let x represent the number of cookies in a box. So the total number of cookies would be 3 multiplied by the number of cookies in a box, so 3 times x, plus there are 3 extra cookies, it says. And then B says determine the number of cookies if there are 20 cookies in each box. So that's basically saying if x is 20. So we have 3 boxes, and in each of those boxes there are 20 cookies, plus there are 3 extra. 3 times 20 plus 3 would be 63 cookies. 
Example 7 says David earns $20 per hour working at SportCheck. Write an equation relating David's earnings, E, to the number of hours, H, he works. So this time we want an equation for his number of earnings based on how many hours he works. Because we want an equation, I'm going to have an equal sign between two expressions. It says his earnings are $20 times every hour he works, where H represents the number of hours. So his earnings are 20 times H. And if he works 30 hours this month, what will his earnings be? Well, in that equation, I'll replace the H with 30. 20 times 30 is $600. And then lastly, in example eight, it says, I work part-time as a golf instructor. I earn $5,000 for the season plus $20 for each children's lesson and $30 for each adult lesson that I give. We need to, in part A, write an equation that describes my total earnings for the season. So my earnings would be equal to, well, I get $20 for each children's lesson. So I'll let C stand for the number of children's lessons I give, 20 times C. Plus, I get $30 for every adult lesson I give, so 30 times A. Plus, I get $5,000 for the season. Notice I have two unknowns in this equation, which is why I use two variables. C is the number of children's lessons I give, and A is the number of adult lessons I give. Those are unknown values, so I use variables. But in part B, it gives us values for those variables. It says, what if I give eight children's lessons and six adult lessons? What would my total earnings be? So I can replace C, the number of children's lessons, with eight, plus 30 times the number of adult lessons, which is six. And now if I evaluate this, I get 160 plus 180 plus 5,000, which is $5,340. And that's the end of that lesson. Make sure you go to jensenmath.ca so you can get a copy of the practice questions that go along with this section. Jensen.